Hey everybody, what's going on? Keith Niebuhr with Auburn Undercover and 24-7 Sports to break down Auburn Tigers recruiting. In this episode of the show, it's going to be less about me and more about 2022 Auburn Tigers quarterback commit Holden Gurner, who has joined us on the show today. I think you're going to really enjoy listening to Holden. He's a six feet three, 215 pound pro style quarterback from Savannah, Georgia's Benedictine School the 191 overall prospect in the country just a week ago was bumped up by 24 seven sports to a four star from a three star. That's big for Auburn. Whenever your quarterback is a four star recruit, it makes it easier to sell uh, the program to other recruits in that class. Holden had a solid sophomore season, but really made a huge jump during his junior season, 27 touchdowns to only three interceptions and uh, right around close to 3000 yards, just a a little bit under that. And we're going to, have more specifics related to his stats uh, when we're interviewing him. But uh, an outstanding player, a great player to get on board early if you're new Tigers coach Brian Harson, and also quarterbacks coach and offensive coordinator Mike Boba. Now, in this interview, Holden's going to share some thoughts about both of those guys, about what it meant to him to be bumped up to a four-star. How about this? He grew up a diehard Georgia fan. His entire family pretty much either went to the University of Georgia or is now attending the University of Georgia. So he's going to tell you a little bit about what that's been like. Uh, And uh, he's also going to share some insight into his recruiting efforts. So without further ado, excuse me, getting a little dry here. Without further ado, let's get to our interview with four-star Auburn Tigers 2022 quarterback commit Holden Gurner. All right, we're joined by Auburn quarterback commit, four-star cornerback commit, I should say, Holden Gurner of Benedictine in Savannah, Georgia. Holden was recently bumped up from three stars to four stars. Holden, I, look, I know you pretty well. We've talked for several months. You don't really care that much about rankings, but I'm assuming it's nice to be recognized for your efforts, right? Absolutely, yes, sir. It's definitely nice to have some recognition for the hard work that I've put in. All right, so you're coming off the season, uh, 68% completion percentage, 27 touchdowns, three interceptions, 2,770 yards passing. If my memory's correct, that's a heck of a a junior season. Uh, As a sophomore, your your interception to TD ratio was about 50-50. You just had a couple more uh, touchdowns and interceptions. So you made some serious gains in your statistics. Where were the gains on the field? What, What were you so much better at in 2020 than in 2019? that we saw your statistics kind of go through the roof. Yeah. So basically just in the off season, I just wanted to slow the game down as as much as I possibly could and just make the game easier for me and make, uh, just make the right decisions, throwing the ball and just doing everything I could to, like you said, get the completion percentage up, uh, lower my interceptions. So basically just slowing the game down, understanding it better, um, being able to read the defenses better. That, that was really uh, a key thing for me to be able to, have this big season that I just had, which, which really helps a lot. Let's go back to, I don't know, seven, eight years ago, 10 year old Horton Gurner in Savannah, diehard red and black Georgia Bulldog <laughs> fan. I mean, did you cry after Georgia losses as a kid? I mean, first of all, we should tell everybody your mom went to Georgia, dad went to Georgia, you've got two brothers in Georgia. When you say you were a diehard Georgia fan, what does that mean? How much of a fan were you? How much gear did you have? How much did you hurt after another loss to Florida? I got to throw that dig in there. But, you know, what you, you love that program a lot. So as a kid, how much did you love Georgia? And did you ever envision yourself playing for one of their biggest rivals? Um, I mean, obviously, like you said, I grew up a Georgia fan. I mean, my parents and brothers both went or go there. Um, so, I mean, I always, I mean, I grew up with going to games and stuff with my parents. But, I mean, you know, it, it kind of just, it happened that I, got the opportunity to play for their rival Auburn. I mean, which honestly, it's, I mean, it's, a, it's a blessing to be able to just play in the SEC and just play football in college anyways. But I mean, yeah, like you said, I definitely grew up with a lot of Georgia stuff in my family, but being able to have this opportunity to stay in the SEC and play with Auburn and against Georgia and everything, it's, it's still going to be really special. All right. Well, tell me, how did Auburn get it done? How did Mike Bobo, Brian Harson, you know, Bobo, obviously the offensive corner, how did they convince you that Auburn, would be a great fit for what you do, Holden, your skill set, your mm-hmm. uh, football IQ, and just everything you have to offer. Sure. I mean, both of them, they, like I've said m- many times, both of them played quarterback. They know the quarterback position through and through. So being able to be, get coached by them is really going to be really, really appeal to me. And just 
being in both of their systems, I mean, Coach Bobo has had tremendous success coaching quarterbacks um, in the past. And same with Coach Harson. I mean, he, had, he has had an incredible track record. So just being able to play for them really appealed to me. And just coming together, I think they're going to have a really good system. And hopefully I can, you know, uh, be in, implemented really well into that system and be, be very well developed. Well, like we said, you grew up a Georgia fan, so you've known about Mike Bobo for many years as a quarterback, mm -hmm. as a young up and coming quarterback, a guy who aspires to be a starter in the SEC and play in the NFL. You know, fans have their opinions of Mike Bobo, some great, some not so great. I mean, you know how fans are. What about you and other prospects? What are you guys, what do young quarterbacks, up and coming four star type high school recruits think of Mike Bobo as a as a quarterback developer and as a quarterback play caller, Holden. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, he's an incredible coach and really just an incredible person. I mean, when you talk to him on the phone, he just – he's such a laid-back guy. And, I mean, he's hes so relatable. And just being able to have a coach that's like that is really special. And I think it's going to – I think we're really going to be well together. And it's just – I mean, it's a dream come true to be able to play for him, especially growing up watching him coach and develop these quarterbacks so well. I mean, it's, it's going to be awesome. All right, so many fans in the South are familiar with uh, with Bobo, obviously. But a lot of them are just getting introduced to Brian Harson. I mean, you know, Boise State people knew, but I mm -hmm. wonder how many SEC fans could have named their head coach last year. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about some of the private conversations you've had with Brian Harson. What kind of guy is he? What kind of personality does he have? Just, you know, who is Brian Harson? We're all, as people who either follow Auburn or cover Auburn, and even recruits, Holden, you're talking to recruits. You're out there recruiting for Auburn right now. They're trying to get to know this guy. So right. who is he? What can you tell us about Brian Harson? Um, I mean, he, he's a very intense guy. Obviously, you want that in head football coach, being a very intense guy. But, he, I mean, he is extremely knowledgeable of the game. And, we're, he, I mean, we're going to come to work every single day to be the best version of Auburn that we possibly can be and be the best football team that we possibly can be. Like, and he is just a very intense guy, but I mean, I mean, he's a great coach and obviously we've seen his records. I mean, he's going to do great things at Auburn for sure. Let's get back to your family. Obviously they're going to support you no matter where you go, but it had to be a, both a great moment for mom and dad and your brothers to have you commit to Auburn. But, you know, obviously they're all people who bleed red and black. So what's, uh, what's that been like? What's, I mean, it's, it's different, right? It's a unique situation. I mean, just so you no. know, Auburn's had kickers, you know, De Anders Carlson, the current kicker. His parents went to Bama. Mm -hmm. His mom worked for Bear Bryant. His brother, Daniel Carlson, mm -hmm. obviously the same thing, the great Auburn kicker. So there's been a, some of this before, but what's it like being in that living room the night or the day you decide, hey, I'm going to Auburn uh, and you guys better you guys better start loading up on the orange and blue gear now? Yes, sir. I mean, obviously there's a little back and forth from my brothers, but whether or not I wanted to go to Georgia or whatever, but I mean, in the end, they just wanted, obviously, what was best for me, especially my parents. They just wanted me to be happy. And we just took the time and talked about it. And in the end, we came up with the best decision for me, which committing to Auburn is just a dream come true, especially staying in the South in the SEC, which has always been a dream of mine. I mean, they're, they're very excited for me and very happy for me. All right, Holden, I've watched your film. So have a lot of people. I'm not exactly a great QB evaluator, but I know when a guy's got a strong arm, when I see it, you've got that. But so now you're you're kind of transitioning to this new phase from recruiter to now you're the hunter. You're the guy that's got to bring players into this class with you. Uh, who are some of the guys you've reached out to? You can tell what positions. Just name a couple. We don't want you to go down the whole list. And, and what is your message yeah. to these guys? I mean, it's easy to say, oh, Auburn's the best place. You've got to come here. But mm -hmm. you've got to have some stats. you got to have some numbers. you got to have some real tangible reasons for them to pick Auburn. So who are you after sure. and what are you telling them? Yeah, you know, um, so, I mean, I'm after a bunch of guys, a bunch of receivers, um, Antonio, um, let's see, Wyatt, Antonio Wyatt Williams, Sullivan. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Antonio Williams, Wyatt Sullivan, um, Easton Harris, the lineman. So just a bunch of guys. And I mean, like you said, you don't want to just go out and say, obviously, Auburn's a great place. I mean, everybody can say that. But mainly I just I'm, – I'm reaching out to them and just building a relationship with them. I mean, as their quarterback, I want to be – somebody that they can relate to, somebody they can talk to. And that's basically what I'm just reaching out to them, just saying, hey, like, what's up? You know, just building a relationship and saying, you know, obviously Auburn's a great place. I mean, you want to come look at it for sure. But just saying what's up, um, just getting to know them, 
begin to build a relationship and hopefully they can make the make the right decision to come to Auburn. All right, obviously Holden's pretty busy, so we're going to let him go in just a minute. But Holden, just a couple more questions. The ranking wasn't important to you in many respects because you always you already knew what kind of quarterback you were. But now you get that recognition and other recruits see it. Mm -hmm. And I think you probably thought that was the bigger reason to get moved up because as a guy who's trying to recruit guys now in the eyes of other recruits, you probably, you may look better to some of those guys. Do you, do you think that's how it works sometimes? Like, hey, this uh, is a four star, you know? Yeah, I think, I think definitely that definitely plays a role into it. I mean, it's not obviously the only, the only thing that goes into it, but I think definitely, especially, I mean, I, I looked at it and I looked at guys that were ranked higher than me and everything. I mean, I definitely think that, higher rankings will definitely play a role in bringing in other guys with you. All right. You're going to have some big SEC battles down the road, Alabama, LSU. And, uh, you know, you're going to be playing against Georgia. You're going to be playing against uh, the team you grew up rooting for. And you know the guys that are going to be playing quarterback there because they're Georgia <laughs> boys just like you, Brock Vandegrift and then Gunnar Stockton. Um, what do you think that's going to be like? Let's flash one forward to a few years. And look, nothing's guaranteed. You know, who knows? We don't know what the future holds, but let's flash forward a few years and let's assume everything works out the way you want it to work and does for those guys too. And you're going head to head against Gunnar Stockton on a Saturday against the team you grew up rooting for. What, what do you think that's going to be like that first time Holden Gurner walks into Sanford Stadium as a starting quarterback for the Auburn Tigers, your family, friends, can you even envision and imagine what the emotions are going to be like? Um, I mean, I can, I can envision as best as possible, but I mean, just until that day comes and I'm going to keep dreaming about it. Is this one of those things? This is the last thing I promise. Is the reality better than the dream? I mean, you always knew and wanted to be a division one quarterback and to sign and to be able to commit and all that. And now you're commit, you've got some final phase stages, obviously you got to play your mm -hmm. senior year, then you got to sign, then you got to go through spring ball and all that. And we should point out, I think you are going to be an early, an early graduate. I believe you told me. Correct. Um, yes, so is it, is it, you're living this dream now? Is it, is it as good as you ever, is it as good as you imagined? Is it better? Oh uh, yeah, it's definitely, I mean, it's a lot like I envisioned. I mean, obviously I've never been through this before. It's the first yeah. time. So, I mean, I'm just kind of living one day at a time, especially now just it's, it's a relief to have been uh, committed to Auburn. I mean, it's, it's a relief for sure. So I, now I can just focus on, my school and my team and hopefully doing everything I can to win a state championship in my senior season. So, but it, it's definitely a very, uh, very good reality. Well, you're living the dream. There's no doubt about that, but Absolutely. a lot of work ahead, good student, good off the field as well. Trying to be a leader in this class, Holden Gurner, four-star quarterback from Benedictine in Savannah, Georgia. Holden, we appreciate you taking the time to stop by and talk to us and uh, you let us know anytime you need anything. We'll be there to answer any questions right, you got. Great stuff from Holden Gurner. Auburn's tremendous quarterback commit in the 2022 class. That'll do it for this edition of the show. A quick one. We want to thank Holden Gurner for joining us. I am Keith Niebuhr with Auburn Undercover and 24-7 Sports. We'll do it again soon. Take care, everybody.